Welcome back to Vectors of Relativity, Relative Velocity in One Dimension. This is actually one of my favorite topics to teach in honors physics. All right, let's look at this problem here. A truck is driving 40 miles per hour to the left. In the back of the truck, there is a cannon that is directed to the right. If the cannon shoots out a cannonball at 40 miles per hour, how will this look to a person observing the truck going by? So what we have is your truck here going 40 miles an hour, but shoot your cannonball, shoot your cannonball going out that way, 40 miles an hour. And we want to know how it's going to look like to this person looking at all this happen from an objective point of view. And on my PowerPoint, you can see a video about it that Mythbusters does, which is pretty cool. But what's going to happen is it's just going to look like this ball is just floating and then falls straight downwards so it's pretty cool to see if you want to look at the video but it's just pretty cool to see is what's going to happen this is going to zoom by and the ball is going to shoot and the ball is just going to float and then fall directly downwards okay all right next conceptual questions these uh this relative velocity stuff these are kind of like my favorite topics it's just like very interesting and uh it's just interesting to see if a train is moving at 50 miles an hour and a person throws a ball inside the train at 55 miles per hour in the same direction that the train is moving how fast does how fast will the ball appear to be moving the person someone outside the train so let's just kind of draw this scenario out we have a train it's going pretty fast let's say 50 miles an hour and then Inside of the train, we have a person throwing a ball. Throws a ball, the ball goes five miles an hour. And we want to know, let's say this is like a glass train or something. To so the person outside the train who's not moving at all, how fast is this ball going to be looking like it's going? And how fast it would look like it's going to him, it would look like it's going 50 plus 5, so it would look like it's going... 55 miles an hour if the ball if the person was just holding the ball it would look like it's going 50 miles an hour because it's moving with the train but when he throws it now it looks like it's moving faster than the train so 55 miles an hour so part b you can only kick a soccer ball at 50 miles an hour but you want to impress some scouts by kicking a ball at 60 miles an hour how can you achieve this there's a few ways that you can do this uh, but for maybe the best way is if you're dribbling with the ball at 10 miles an hour and then you kick the ball at 50 miles an hour, now it'd be going 60 miles an hour. So I guess you dribble at 10 miles per hour. Okay. Last question. If a quarterback player throws a football to uh, 30 miles per hour to a receiver who's running towards the throw at 10 miles per hour, how fast is the football moving from the receiver's point of view? So let's kind of draw this out. We have this person. <laughs> wow. Wow, this is bad. <laughs> Throws this football 30 miles an hour. Ding. And then we have this receiver. And this receiver is running towards the person at 10 miles an hour. And we want to know from this receiver's point of view, how fast does this football look like? And you know, I get answers like 30 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour. But what it's going to look like is he's going to be going towards it. So what's going to happen is this ball is going to come faster to him than if he was just standing still. So it's going to come faster to him than if he was just standing still or if he was running away from it. So it would look like it's coming at 40 miles an hour and if you've ever tried this it's a lot harder to catch a ball when you're running towards it than when you're running away from it okay so this is going to look like it's going 40 miles an hour okay and you could try this out uh it's a yeah it's, you can try it out okay next question here a moving sidewalk in an airport terminal moves at one meter per second and is 35 meters long. If a man goes towards the sidewalk at 15 meters per second and steps on it without changing his motion, 
how much time does it take him to reach the opposite end if he is moving in the same direction that the sidewalk is moving in the opposite direction of the moving sidewalk. So let's do the same direction first. So what we can see with this problem, sorry. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. What we can see with this problem, so now when the person steps on the to the sidewalk that's moving one meter per second, this person is gonna start moving faster. So his speed is gonna be 15 plus one, which is 16 meters per second. The distance that he's gonna be traveling is equal to 35 meters long. And we want to know uh, blah, blah, how much time does it take. So we're looking for time here. So now that we're doing this, what we want to figure out is we want to figure out this time. So we're just going to be using our simple formula. Speed is equal to distance divided by time. Speed is 16 meters per second. Distance is 35 and now we're doing time. Let's just do a little bit of algebra and that we and we can now find out that 35 divided by 16 is equal to 2.19 uh, 2.19 seconds okay man but he's moving pretty fast now if he's moving the opposite direction of the moving sidewalk so he should be going slower so if he was walking towards that 15 meters per second and now he's going the opposite direction that means we're going to subtract his speed and it's going to be going 14 meters per second now 14 meters per second the distance is th still 35 meters and we're looking for the time speed equals distance over time 14 is equal to 35 divided by t and we can find that the time is going to be equal to 2.5 seconds so it's going to take a bit longer to do okay so let's look at the next problem here you are driving with a speed of 40 miles an hour so this is you relative to the earth so you're going 40 miles an hour to north the car next to you is traveling with the speed of 25 miles an hour. So let me just throw this. 40 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour. Lastly, the truck in the opposite lane is traveling with the speed of 30 miles an hour relative to zero. So it's going 30 miles an hour, but it's going in the other direction. So 30 miles an hour. From your point of view, what is the velocity of the car to? What is the velocity of this one? And what is the velocity of the truck? So this is where it gets a little bit confusing. And you might have experienced this while you've been um, while you've been driving or something like that. What you might have noticed is that if there's a car next to you and you guys are pretty much going the same speed, it almost looks as if both of you aren't moving. So if you're going next to a car, they look a lot slower. However, if a car is going on the other side, it looks like they're zooming by extremely fast. And this has to do with the whole thing with relative velocity. So when it's going in the same direction, it doesn't look as fast, so you kind of, you subtract the speed. So if you're going 40 miles an hour, then it looks like this car, uh, if this is you going 40 miles an hour, it looks like this car is kind of moving backwards like this because you're going to be moving up and it's not as fast. So it looks like this car is going to be going backwards like this. So what we're going to be doing is, uh, from your point of view, what is the velocity of car 2 and the truck? So the car, this car is looking like it's going to be going backwards. So you're going to do 40 miles an hour minus... 25 miles an hour and it's gonna be this car is gonna be looking like it's going backwards 15 miles an hour Okay, and I guess I'll, I'll put a negative because it looks like it's going backwards however for this truck as you notice like when two things are going towards each other it looks a lot faster and what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be adding these two 40 miles an hour plus 30 miles an hour and it's going to be looking like it's going really fast down south this way 
70 miles an hour. So I'm going to just call it negative 70 miles an hour because it's going south. And just like this one, it looks like it's going backwards, which is south, uh, 15 miles an hour. Okay. Uh, I also have a video on my PowerPoint that shows a quick demonstration of this, which is pretty cool. From the truck's point of view, what is the velocity of car one? This, that's you, and car two. So again, for car one, they're gonna be going toward each other. Car two is also going toward each other. So we're gonna be adding for both. And from his point of view, they both look like they're going north, okay? So we're just gonna do 30 miles an hour. First, I'll do me plus four, uh, 40 miles an hour. And uh, that'll be equal to positive 70 miles an hour. And then for car two, it's going to look like 30 miles an hour plus 25. 30 miles an hour plus 25 miles per hour, which is equal to 55 miles per hour. Okay. All right. Let's look at the next example here. So what we have is a railroad flat car is traveling to the right with a speed of 13 meters per second. So this railroad is going 13 meters per second relative to an observer standing on the ground. Someone is riding a motor scooter. So this person here is riding a motor scooter on the flat car. What is the magnitude of the velocity of the motor scooter relative to the flat car? if its velocity relative to the observer on the ground is 18 meters per second to the right. So this person sees that the motor scooter is going 18 meters per second. If this person sees this motor scooter is going 18 meters per second, that must mean that he is riding on this railroad and he must be going five meters per second. How I know that is because if he wasn't standing still, it would just look like he's moving 13 meters per second. But now that he's riding on it, then I know he has to be going fast in 13 meters per second. It has to be 13 plus something equals 18. So it has to be five meters per second. So what is the magnitude of the velocity of the motor scooter relative to a flat car? Five meters per second. But what is the magnitude of the uh, velocity of the motor scooter relative to the car? Uh, if relative to the observer on the ground is three meters per second to the left. So it's not 18 meters per second to the right anymore, it's three meters per second to the left. So, can't erase that. So if it looks like it's going three meters per second to the left, I'm gonna call that negative three meters per second. That must mean that this car now must be going to the left because if it wasn't moving, it'd be looking like it's going 13 meters per second to the right. So that means that it has to be going the other direction. And it has to be going the other direction 16 meters per second because uh, it needs to be going faster than this railroad to look like it's going to the left. So that must mean it's moving 16 meters per second to the left or negative 16 meters per second. What would it look like to, to the flat car if its velocity relative to the observer to the ground is zero? That must mean that it's canceling out. It's canceling out with how fast this railroad is going. So if it's canceling out, it's just going to look like it's just staying in the same position. And that, must, that means it has to be going 13 meters per second to the left. So that would mean it's going negative 13 meters per second. Okay. These are a little bit confusing, but just try to think about it and that's going to be the key to solving these problems. Okay, last one. Two piers, A and B, are located on a river. B is 1,500 meters. Uh, we could also call that 1.5 kilometers from A. Two friends must make round trips from A to B and return. One rows a boat, so one rows a boat at a constant speed of four kilometers an hour relative to the water. The other walks on the shore at a constant speed of four kilometers an hour. The velocity of the river is 2.8 kilometers an hour. So let me do that. The current is 2.8 kilometers an hour in the direction from A to B, so in this direction. 
how much time does it take the walker to make a round trip? So let's uh, see everything that we know. We know his speed on the ground is equal to four kilometers an hour. We know the distance he's gonna travel is from here and back. So that's gonna be a total distance of three kilometers. And we're looking for the time. So now we're, all we're gonna do is speed equals distance over time. Four kilometers an hour is equal to three kilometers divided by the time. And we get time is equal to 0 0.75 hours. Okay. How much time does it take the rower to make the round trip? So this is a bit more confusing because when he's going to the right, he's kind of, he's going faster because the current is pushing him. So his speed when he's going to the right is going to be four kilometers an hour plus the current, which is 2.8 kilometers an hour. So his total speed when he's going to the right is 6.8 kilometers an hour. His distance he covers from here to here is gonna be equal to 1.5 kilometers, and we're looking for the time. So again, we're just doing speed is equal to distance over time. 6.8 is equal to 1.5 divided by the time. And I'll call that, let's call that time sub one. So the first time from here to here. And T sub one is gonna equal 1.5 divided by 6.8, which gives us 0.22 hours. So not, not that long, 0.22 hours. However, we have to find how long it's gonna to take to go back. And it's gonna be harder to go back because the current is on the other side. And the speed, again, is gonna be four, but this time, instead of adding it, we're gonna be subtracting it because it's gonna be harder. So the speed is gonna be four minus 2.8, so 1.2 kilometers an hour. The distance is still 1.5 kilometers. And we're looking for the time. And I'm gonna call this T2. So let's use our formula. 1.2 speed equals distance, 1.5 over T2. And T2, we get 1.5 divided by 1.2. 1.25 hours. So a lot longer to get back. And so when we want to find the total time it takes to go back and forth, we're going to do 1.25 plus this 0.22. And this is going to give us 1.27 hours. Okay, so it's a lot... It's gonna take a lot more time than if he just walked at the same speed. All right, we'll be doing more of this a little bit later on.